We decided to start a unique event and call it the Big Ethical Question Slam. So we did. It's a festival of big ideas. It's a slam competition all about ethics. It's a happening. It's a, it's a get together in the community of all sorts of groups. It draws everybody from um, the young to the old and all different backgrounds. They deal with questions that are relative to our community. It's got a real uniqueness to it. It's perfect for Ann Arbor. I mean, it's competitive. Team spirit, people wearing their colors. The winning team wins $600. It's like a brain sport. It's a chance to exercise our minds. We're all about having a conversation, beginning a dialogue. It gets you thinking about things you haven't thought about before. You're provoked. People can disagree in very positive ways. The slam is a thought-provoking, entertaining, really intellectual evening. It's a great event. It happens at Connor O'Neill's, so you can sit back, have a beer, some fish and chips, and be ethical all on the same night. This is kind of like a quiz night, but with a much more intellectual bent to it because you're asked these ethical questions and you have these teams that are kind of competing and trying to come up with the answer that will impress the judges. And of course, there are no right answers to these questions. And it's so rare that we get a chance to um, congregate and talk big ideas as a, a diverse community and it's a real uh, gift that um, A2 Ethics has given us. Watching the process by which people reason through to conclusions about ethical issues uh, is a really instructive and edifying thing to be part of. Bringing together this many people f to talk about ethically focused questions um, that are all from different backgrounds, all from different organizations with different mission statements. You're going to hear something new that you're going to go, huh. My big ethical question slam t-shirt is yeah. pretty much the only t-shirt I'll wear to school. One of the things that was really fun was getting the questions ahead of time and sitting down and looking at them as a group. The answers we come up with are actually a real collaboration of us just sitting there and yeah. we just hash it out and we all have our unique perspectives and talents. And what we did was we had dinner for two nights in a row and we probably should have done it for five nights because what happens is you get off on these tangents and you start talking about why this is ethical, why this is not ethical. We go through all the questions and we add in kickers <laughs> or see what's missing and give each other some feedback and then that's that's it to have fun to win here we go <laughs> came to do something new and support a good cause and we're excited to participate in our first slam we've competed in the last two years and I'm here because it's a lot of fun and we love ethics and I think it's good for the soul and I'm here to show that ethics can be fun it's a fabulous uh, community event. We keep learning from this experience, which is great. The Ann Arbor Ethics Slam is awesome. Third annual Big Ethical Question Slam. Woo we have six teams for this evening's event, and our defending champions, Team Darcy. <laughs> Green Hill School. The Regroup Utilitarians. Yay! 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 The Bible Emus from the We also have two nurses and a double paradox. And finally, the Wise Women of the League from the League of Women Voters. And our revered and, of course, incorruptible judges. judge portion and then we also have an audience participation portion. Everybody has a scorecard. You are also going to evaluate the quality 
of the answers that you hear this evening. So, all of our questions tonight were submitted by the general public to our website. Also, each team receives those questions prior to today so they can think about it. We're going to pull those questions from a hat. The question is asked, the teams have two minutes to think about it, and then two minutes to respond. So the first place winner this evening wins $600, and the second place winner wins the Philosopher Bridge yes. Magnets. They also double as finger puppets. So, multitasking. Why do many of us believe there is something more blameworthy and more culpable about a drunk driver who kills someone accidentally on the way home than one who, equally drunk, drives home without anything happening? Green Hills, you have two minutes. We're taking the fact that someone has driven under the influence, which, as a society, we had decided is a crime, and it's a crime with consequences that you know may or may not happen. You may be able to get home safely, or you may get stopped by a cop and given a warning, or you may be driving 90 miles an hour and get your license taken away, or you may crash your car and you know have to go to court and be on probation, or you may kill someone, which adds the act of murder. And both of these crimes and both of these acts have different tiers of consequence. The driver who doesn't get caught and does get caught are both guilty of the crime of driving under the influence. The one who kills someone, which is a, a terrible tragedy, is also guilty of murder. I really liked the answer because I felt it was rooted in the ethics of consequentialism. That's why there's a difference. They are both morally blameworthy, but one has far more egregious consequences that society justifiably treats very differently. voted in the past election. One of the state candidates I voted for was not really qualified. You have to trust me. But he agreed with the one issue I feel very strongly about. The other candidate was qualified based on his experiences. I agreed with him on all issues except the issue I care about most. If everyone voted like I do, is that an ethics problem? We live in a democracy in this country, and the right to vote is granted to us by the Constitution. Right now, all men and women, every race and creed can vote. Yeah. Women have only been able to vote for less than 100 years. It is important that we all have this right, but it is a right given to us with privacy. As we make any decisions, we use our own thoughts to examine the candidates, to examine the issues. And we give some sort of a mathematical weight to all these factors. The question that was given was, the candidate is a horrible candidate, not somebody that's going to be a great leader. But there is one factor that is very important to the voter that they're going to choose this candidate. Is that unethical? I would argue that it's not unethical. We have the right to privacy in our voting. Some of us are very verbal and vocal about what we support and the candidates we support. That's also something granted to us in this country. But we do have the right to privacy. I might find a candidate that is absolutely unacceptable in every other way, but I might be an extreme pacifist and do not want my children to go to war. That candidate may be very strong on the anti-war, so I choose that particular person. I have the ethical principle of autonomy going for making my own decisions based on the information that I have available to me, as does every citizen in this country. I find it may not be the best for us if people are one issue voters, but then it behooves all of us to try to uncover the issues and decide who is the best candidate. I wondered, one, if the person who wrote this question is in the room. Okay, good. And I was mad about it, but what just happened is you absolutely just schooled me. Like, you totally changed my frame of reference for what I was mad about in the first place, and you did a really good job. Having spent most of my life voting for the lesser of two evils, I think that was a great answer. Ethically bound and very nicely 
party. Politicians talk about questions we must answer as a society. Suppose we had a discussion about how to fairly distribute limited health care resources in our society. How would the people in the slam answer the politicians? Everyone should be eligible for health care. Everyone includes all citizens and legal residents. Everyone should share the burden of cost based on ability to pay. The same quality of medical treatment should be available to each person. The medical community must work to keep treatments and costs reasonable. And yes, indeed, this does mean that there are choices, ethical choices that may have to be made. And questions arise, how does the medical industrial community keep costs down? How do they stop the co uh, competition of, I have this machine, you have this machine, therefore we must have it, or a bigger and better hospital, these kind of things. And yes, the question about death panels, which we don't like to say, but there may have to be choices made, and these are all the ethical questions that we as a community have to look at. Thank you. I thought it was brilliant. Churchill said, when a society tries to decide what's right and wrong, it's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. And I think that was good. I think you did a great job. Peter? I, too, want to start with a quote uh, in somewhat in, in summary of what I took to be your position, which would be, from each according to his means, <laughs> to each according to his need. Now, it's now, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, the Churchill quote was about the Soviet Union, really? and I used the quote that led to the Soviet Union. <laughs> the question was probably the most significant ethical issue facing healthcare delivery. I recently saw a story about the Italian scientists who were convicted for criminal negligence because they failed to forewarn people about an earthquake. <laughs> Should scientists and other experts be morally liable for inaccurate predictions? Okay, so the question gets obscured by bringing in the issue of the Italian scientists and the criminal negligence charges. The real question is, should scientists and other experts be morally liable for inaccurate predictions? The answer to that is clearly not, as long as their, their predictions are done honestly and based on all the information that they have at hand. If, on the other hand, they're not making, failing to make predictions or making inaccurate pre predictions because of some kind of pressure from somewhere else, that's a whole different story. But that's not the question. If we assume the question is just a scientist has all the information at his fingertips that is available, and he makes a prediction based on that, of course he's not liable if he's wrong. Stupidity is not a crime. Error is not a crime. Stupidity is not unethical, and error is not unethical. Again, I thought it was well delivered. I enjoy that you rephrase the question and answer the question that you rephrase. Very cogent, coherent. And the winner of this year's People's Choice Award for Breakfast at Angelo's, Team Darcy. Congratulations. Magnets, two nurses, and a double paradox. So this is for our $600 grand prize, Green Hills School.